Batman Unlimited. I hope you're enjoying our series on tool offsets and work offsets. This will be the final episode in method three for our tool offsets and work offsets. So let's fire up the machine and get to it. We're back at our machine again. We're talking about method three for handling tool offsets and work offsets. If we recall in our first video, method one, we didn't use the tool offset table at all. We just used the work offset G54 to set an X, Y, Z offset. In method number two, we started utilizing our tool offset table by spelling out our height offset number, our H number for our tool, then applying our G43 apply tool offset number, and then by using the Z offset to lift the Z0 from the table up to wherever our part is in the G54 offset. Method 3 still uses all those same components and works the same way but in reverse. So method 2 is considered a negative offset method because all your tool offset numbers will be negative. Method 3 is considered a positive tool offset method because all your tool offsets are going to be positive. What we're going to do is between method 2 and method 3 we are going to change where our tool 0 datum is. So rather than using the table for our Z0 we're going to use what they call gauge line. Gauge line is an imaginary plane in the Z height where your Z home is and the spindle is at zero. With the, <clears throat> with the category 40 taper, let me take the tool out of the machine. With a category 40 taper, the zero point of the taper is considered when the taper reaches 1.75 inches in diameter. So as this taper grows, as soon as it hits 1.75 in the diameter, that's considered gauge line zero. This method requires you to buy an extra piece of equipment and it can be quite expensive for category 40, 50 and BT and HSK tool holders. What it does is a, it's a tool presetter. It will hold the tool holder like this at its gauge zero line. Then you can come in with a height gauge and measure the height of the tool outside of the machine. That's why it's called presetting. This will do two things. One, it frees your machine up to keep making parts. You're not spending time at the machine setting tools. You're doing it at a workstation ahead of time so your machine can still be making chips while you're setting new tools. And then two, because we're using an external reference that reference is going to be identical for every tool and then we can move that tool to every machine in our shop. That gives us great flexibility of being able to set a, a tool length for this tool, writing it down, remembering it, and then having the flexibility to move that tool to any machine. So let's put this tool back in the spindle. The reason why it's called a positive offset number is because what will happen is that tool length will be added to the Z height and then if you set Z0 it's going to want to lift the Z column up so the tip of the tool is at the gauge line zero point. The other added piece of equipment that you need in addition to the tool setter is you need a Z height setter tool that you've previously measured the length on so you know what the tool length of your Z height setter is so that you can come down and probe the Z height of your part so then you can measure the distance from the gauge line zero of the spindle down to the Z reference point you want to use for your part. So it requires some investment in extra equipment to do this method but if you have multiple machines in the shop it will pay off greatly because then you can take the tools and move them from machine to machine 
without any issues of, of worrying about tool offsets or having to redo tool offsets. This is going to wrap up our series on tool offsets and work offsets. I hope we took some of the mystery out of the different methods that people use for tooling offsets and work offsets. This should give you some ideas on how to best apply these practices for your specific machining operation. Recall that in video one, with method one, we have to keep resetting our z-height often and this leads to us spending a lot of time in between tool changes. Method two, we can set all of our tool lengths before we start running our parts. Then while we're running our parts, we simply just have to change tools, keeping track of which H offset we're using and applying our G43 tool offset compensation. Method number two does, however, require you to have tool holders that every time you take the tool in and out of the spindle, it will always return to the same zero reference. In method three that we just looked at, we expanded upon method two, changed the Z height reference from the table to a gauge line zero, imaginary plane at the spindle nose, and we used an external piece of equipment to measure the tool length. Using a tool presetter will free up time in the machine or the machine doing more machine work, but more importantly, it will give us a reference that's independent of the machine. So we can take that tool with its offset that we measured on our tool presetter, move it to any machine in our shop, and be able to make chips confidently that that tool length is gonna be accurate. I hope you enjoyed our series on tool offsets and work offsets. If you have any comments, please feel free to comment below or send us an email if you have any other additional questions. Thanks for watching, we'll see you again.